Hi, welcome back to Preference Nomad Junior. I'm Teacher John, and today on App Inventor Tutorial, we're going to look at how apps compare to numbers. As you can see, I already have the game installed on the phone. We have two alligators. Each alligator has a random number assigned to it, and all we have to do is tap on the larger number. As we do so, the score increases. If we get the uh, answer wrong, so we tap on the lower number, the smaller number, our life decreases. And if we keep getting it wrong, eventually the life will go to zero, the restart button will appear, and we see our final score of two. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the designer. This time, I will start with the completed design. You can see I have all the images, labels, and arrangements and the media files in the project. You can pause the video and replicate the designer and file your own pictures first. Don't worry, you've learned all these components and concepts in the previous lessons. I believe you can do this too. If you really want to start with this copy, feel free to contact us. We're happy to send you the copy and the revision materials. So if you're ready, let's get started. First we need to create two variables, life and score, with initial values of 3 and 0 respectively. They are for the app to remember the data of the game. So if we click on variables, initialize global, first one change to life, and the second one change to score. Now we need to link that to a number, so click on the block mass and insert. As we said, change of life to three. So if you remember that in the designer we've only put text score and life into the score label and life label. So now we need to make sure that the correct value for life and score are displayed when the app is started. And of course, we want the reset button to be invisible. So how do we do that? If we click on screen one, and when screen one initialize, then scroll down, to life label, I'm looking for set life label text. Now we want to join the word life to global life. Now we can do this in the text block, and there we have join. And we're going to go back into text and select the first one, which is a string block and type in the word life. And we're going to link that to the global life, so back to variables. We're going to get that information and set to global life. Now for score is exactly the same. So we can actually duplicate the life label and just change the relevant information to score and global score. We've only put text score and life in the score label and life label. So now we need to make sure that the correct values for life and score are displayed when the app is started. And of course, when the game is just started, the restart button should be invisible. So how do we do that? First of all, we scroll down to left number label. Set left number label. Now we want a uh, random integer from zero to a hundred. So it's a math question we're asking here. So click into math and find the correct one we're looking for. 
Now for the right number is exactly the same. So we can duplicate what we have there and just change from the left number to the right number. So now we have the left number and right number. We'll have a random integer from one to 100 when the app is first started. But we also said that we want the restart button to be invisible. So we go down and click on restart button and we're looking for visible. So set restart button visible. Now we're asking a question. So we need to go to logic and say, is it a true or false question? We want it to be visible, no. So we click on false and we can insert that. So now let's have a quick look at the emulator to show how the app looks right now. As you can see, we have the two random numbers. Life is set to three and score is set to zero. Okay, that's great. Let's move on to the next part. So we want to compare two numbers when the left number button is clicked. In the programming world, computers use relational operators to compare two numbers. There are six basic relational operators. We will take a look at four. Equal, not equal, greater than, and less than. We usually use the relational operators together with conditionals. They can tell if a comparison of numbers is true or not. So let's take a look at the left alligator button. We want to know when the left number button is clicked, a question will be asked. So if we select the second one down and left number. If the left number label is greater or bigger than the right number label, then we will get one point. But as you can see, we can't slot that in. So we're going to go now to control. We're going to use if then else. This will become quite clear in one minute why we use this one. So now we can slot our question into the if. So when left number button clicked, if the left number is greater or bigger than the right number, this is when we will say then the point, the score will be adjusted by one. So go to variables, set, global score, and then if we select the third one down, and then go back to variables, we're gonna get the original information, which was zero, from the global score, and we're gonna increase it by one. And now we need the score label itself to be adjusted to show that our score has increased, but we can now duplicate score label from the initialized screen and just insert it. So that's our first question answered. Yes, we have the question right, so we get one extra point. However, if we get a question wrong, then we have one life deducted. So this is when we move into else. So to start with, we can just duplicate what we have in the then block and adjust everything to be the life. And type in life and get the information from the global life. Now, this time we want to deduct one point. So we could just put minus one. Or the correct way of doing it, or the better way, would be to go back to math and use the minus 
So the fourth one down. And then we can just take the global life, slot that in, and the number. So just readjust that back to one. And that's much better. We just delete that one and then move on to the next part. So after adding a score or deducting the life, no matter the player's answer, if it's answered correct or incorrectly, we need to ask another question. So we can do this yet again by duplicating from the uh, initialization screen. And we can set that under else for the left and right number like so. I'll just move it up to make it easier for you to see. Let's take a quick look at the emulator to see how that looks. Okay, so at the moment we can only click on the left button. So if I click on the left button, the score has increased because it was a larger number and the score should increase again. This time we have a lower number, so we should see a deduction of life. And what we need now is some more lower numbers just to demonstrate that when the life gets to zero, it will continue into a negative number. So we need to set another relational operator. So let's take a look. So if we click on math and this is the one we're going to use, is the equals to. So back to variables, and we're going to get the uh, global life, and we want that to equal zero. So let's select the first one down. So there's our question. Now, if this is the case and we've run out of lives, we want to change the uh, score label. So if we duplicate the score label from there, and we just change that now to say final score. And because it's the end of the game, we want to make the left and right alligator button disabled. So. If we click on left number button and we select enable, is that true or false? So we take a look at the logic and we know this now to be false. We can just duplicate that again and change it from left number button to right number button. Now, because the game is finished, we also want the restart button now to be visible again. So if we just scroll down to restart button, and we find visible. So restart button visible. And this one, once we change to true. Now, we want to link all this together. So we're going to use another if, then, or else. So back to control, if, then, or else, and slot that in underneath the other one. Now, if we ask if our global life equals zero, we then want the global score to go to final score, and we want the left number button and right number button to be disabled. The restart button to be visible again. And now we can just move the question back into else because if we still have some lights available, we want another question to be asked. So let's take a look at the emulator and see how that's worked. Now we still only have the left number button working. So I can only click on the left button. As you can see already, my life has decreased to one. I have a score of one. As I've pressed it again, I've got to a life of zero. If 
final score of 1 and the restart button has appeared. So now let's work on the right number button. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but the logic is actually the same as when the left number button is clicked. So we can duplicate the left button. But we have to remember to change the left button to the right button, plus we need to change the left number label to the right number label. That is now greater or bigger than the left number label. So let's move that across to the right side and just zoom out to make it a bit more clearer. Okay, so now that's uh, complete. We are nearly there. Just a few more steps, but let's take a one more look at the emulator to see if that's working. So now we have both buttons working. I can try to play the game correctly and click on the bigger number. As you can see, my score is increasing. However, if I start getting it wrong, the life is decreasing until we get to zero. My final score is five and the restart button has appeared. But at this moment, if I want to restart the game, the reset button or the restart button doesn't do anything. So let's take a look at how we can fix that. What should happen when the restart button is pressed is actually mostly the same as when the app is started. So we can simply duplicate the when screen one initialize. But we don't want when screen one initialize. So let's just delete that straight away. What we do want is when the restart button is clicked. And we can reinsert that straight away. Now, when that happens, we want the global life and the global score to be reset. So back into variables, we're gonna set the global life back to three and variables again so we want to set the global score to zero now if you remember we've disabled the buttons so I can actually duplicate this information down here so left number button enabled, we can change that now to true. And the right number button also can be changed to true. Well, that's it all complete. Hopefully the game should work perfectly. But let's check on the emulator to see if that's the case. Okay, so if I click on the bigger number, my score is increasing. And if I click on the smaller number, you can see the lives decreasing. All the way to zero, we have a final score of three, and the restart button is now visible. If I click on the restart, the game starts again. Great job, everyone. So let's do a little recap of what we've learned today. We started off by learning about relational operator. If one number was greater than another, and we also looked at if one number was equal to another. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the project. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get our daily contents. I'm Teacher John, and this is Beer Preference Nomad Junior.